What's up, everyone? My name is Justin Odisha. Welcome back to another episode of my podcast. Today uh, on the show, I have Sean Gunby. He runs a YouTube channel called Gunby Publishing. He's posted, I think, over a thousand videos. He's gotten about 20 million plus views in the past couple of years. And uh, I actually met him. Oh, he's also published his own books. I've actually met him in New York City uh, randomly. And it's kind of crazy watching his channel from our random encounter to now so sean how you doing thanks for coming on the show hey justin what's up man it's uh thank you for having me man thank you for having me uh you know i was just thinking about how crazy how we met i was in washington square park that day i was shooting the dude who was the pigeon he had he's the bird man or whatever and uh you um I happened to be walking by and the kid Parviv was filming you. You know, we met and that was probably over two years ago. And, um, you know, here we are today, man. And, you know, it's just all about establishing relationships, man. And that's what I tell people, you know, entrepreneurs, people that want to be entrepreneurs, you got to establish and cultivate relationships, man. So thanks for having me, man. Yeah. And uh, so for, yeah, so for people that didn't know, I was... I'm not from New York, but I was randomly there. I had done, I was doing a little meetup with some people and we were in Washington Square Park. And Sean, I think, what was this, 2017? You must have just been starting your channel, right? I think it was 2018. 18, yeah. Yeah, I and don't even think I was monetized then. So Sean came up to me. He saw that we all had cameras. You had your camera. And uh, he just came up to us and just started like um, doing a little like video, a little interview, which I, I loved. You can still see that video on your channel. That's it. It's and there. I, I remember saying, you know, I like your energy. More people should just, you know, cause we're all out there creating like what they I think people are sometimes afraid of like, you know, just going up and, and trying something. And I still have, I don't know if you can see it, but you gave me your book. I appreciate says, you, man. You got the, uh, it says always believe in you and i actually read it and i was like man this guy is this guy's energy is crazy <laughs> <laughs> so i wanted to ask you like what how did you even start recording because you know you're 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 a young man but you know you're over 50 fit over 50 like you say you've already had your whole life you've already had a whole life so far what made you start picking up the camera and say, I'm, I'm going to get on YouTube? Um, I got released from federal prison in January of 20, no, 2016. And as a way to cope, I wrote, I started to write. And what I started to write turned into the two books, the two you just held, held up. These are my two books. You can get them on my website, gumbypublishing.bigcartel.com. So I started to write. The writing was therapeutic for me. And when I looked up, I had a whole notebook full of uh, writing. So I published it. And I said, Sean, the best way to market this thing is through YouTube. So I went and used another dude's camera at his spot. And we shot a video of me talking about the book and a little backstory. I put the video up and it got like 37 views. <laughs> and then uh, that was it. And then I just kept I just kept shooting videos. I just kept I was using his camera. And then it was taking him too long to edit. I'm I'm going up there, I'm shooting shit. He's taking them three, four, five. And I said, man, fuck this. I'm going to get my own camera. I went and bought my own GoPro. I bought my own everything and I started shooting videos and I never stopped, man. Okay, there's a lot there. So, I mean, yeah, the book is titled A Black American Male's Adventure from Dead Broke to Millionaire to Dead Broke to White Collar Crime Incarceration in the United States. In my soul, baby. Federal Bureau of Prison to Back on Top. There's a whole, whole lot in there. It's like, why did you, why were you in the feds? I was in there on a white collar crime, man. I was um, I was a licensed real estate broker here in Jersey. I was a real estate investor and I had a financial consulting business. I did taxes for people 
And um, I was uh, I got greedy and I started getting people back bigger refunds than what they were supposed to. My fault. Uh, giving them bad deductions and they earned income credit, you know, just trying to help people and be make money at the same time. Uh, got caught up, investigated, indicted, pled guilty, and got 18 month sentence and was sent out to West Virginia, to FCI Morgantown, Morgantown, West Virginia. Yeah, and um, it's, I mean, it says, so how did you, I mean, it says you went broke after that how did you lose all that all all your life savings and everything when the feds came justin they scared the shit out of me man yeah um at that point when they came i had about six hundred and sixty thousand dollars in my td ameritrade account i'm an options trader i trade my own account i had about 275 grand cash in my business account and i owned uh nine rental properties one of them i own free and clear so it was about 1.2 million altogether. And, you know, the shit scared me so bad, man. Um, you know, I, 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 did a, I did a bad thing. You know, I, 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 I tried to trade with a bunch of fear, a bunch of worry, a bunch of anxiety, um, a bunch of, ang like, just totally emotional. And I ended up blowing all of my money in the market. What I was trying to do was triple it because I thought they were gonna, I said, well, the feds, they're gonna, you know, let me put this million on three million. So if they're gonna take a million, I still got two. And in my desperation, I fucked up and lost it all. My fault. Yeah, I have definitely feel you. I've dabbled in some options. It's crazy how fat you can really just lose all your money right away. So people got to be careful out there, especially now the stock market's going crazy. And like, I think people don't understand how, how risky trading can be. You know what I mean? Um, but so that's crazy. So even from my little experience with like little stock market wins and losses, I know how that can hurt when you lose some money. Like it can ruin your whole week. It can ruin your whole day, your month. And to lose all of that, like how did you, and and to go to prison, like where where were you? How did you, how do you recover from that? Cause right now, I mean, we're talking about all this negative stuff, but mind you, like ever, what I've seen from you is like the most energetic, like positive guy, I've seen. So how do you balance that? Prison saved me, Justin. That shit saved me, man. <laughs> Yo, to to at one point in your life, I was 40. When the feds came, they came in 2011. I was 42. I was worth a million dollars. And then, you know, to see your account go from... To see your net worth go from 1.2 million down to three thousand dollars is devastation. is is a light term, man. Depression, uh, anger, self hatred, self loathing, self project the whole shit, man. And you know, at that time, I was my my son was born. I was trying to do everything I could to stay out of prison. I was trying to stay home to be with my son, and uh, my base offense level was such that I had mandatory incarceration, and uh, I had to go, and that was the blessing. The place that I was trying to avoid going was the place where I resurrected my spirit and my soul and my life. And um, it, that shit saved me because had I stayed in Jersey with all of the thoughts going on, I, I don't know if I, I would have bounced back. But when I got to the joint, it, it, it got me out of here, you know, and I came to a reckoning that like, all right, Sean, everything is gone. All the houses are gone. The real estate license is gone. The money is gone. Everything is gone. So just start all over. And, and that's what I did, man. So what, so what was your game plan on that? You go in, all right, so everything's fresh, start, fresh, but you got 18 months ahead of you. So what were you doing every day? Like 
I know you love to read. I mean, you were writing or what is it like? Is it like the movies, how they say? No. <laughs> like cut, no. cutting onions in the kitchen? <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't know why everybody thinks the feds is like, uh, you know, the food is fucked up. It's not a good place. Um, but to answer your question, for me, when I got there, Justin, man, this was the first time in my life that I couldn't run from me no more, man. That I couldn't front on me no more. That I couldn't fake it no more. That I couldn't hide from me no more. And that I was laying in my bunk. I was laying in my rap. And I said, Sean, man, you 45 years old and you in federal prison. Something is wrong with you, man. What the fuck is wrong with you? And at that point, I began to reflect and to turn the, the, the searchlight inward toward me to find out why was I continually crashing and burning in my life, man. And, and um, you know, I met some other brothers in there, some cool people in there, man. Um, you know, you hear other stories. I lost 1.2. You know, you hear somebody, you talk to him, he says he lost 9 million. This dude lost 19 million. He lost 80 million. He lost 250 million. And then it just puts your whole shit in perspective that like, you know, your situation could be worse. And they had like five years, 10 years. You know what I'm saying? So that that was the, when I got to that place, that was when, that was when I figured out that I could no longer I could no longer run from me, man. I could no longer hide from me. And I began to change. I, I, I went inside and I changed, man. What are some values that, that you had? Because like everyone's right, everyone right now is, or like, you know, we're always chasing money and we're always chasing. And we put so much of our self-worth in like, you know, how much money we can make and save. But once you had all, all that taken away from you, what did you then have to, what did you begin valuing in your, or did that type of, of shift mind. happen? Peace of mind. Peace of mind. Because the feds came in 2011. I didn't go to prison until 2014. I stayed out three years fighting my case. And for three years, I don't remember one night getting more than five hours of sleep in a row from the stress and the depression and the anger, you know, and, 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 you know, just the sadness and the doom and gloom. And when I got to Morgantown, you know, I was able to sleep seven hours, eight hours. And I began to put shit in perspective, man, that, None of the shit that I had bought, none of the material shit I had bought could, 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 could save me, could help me, you know? And, and um, that's when I began to um, appreciate peace of mind, man. And let me tell you a story. Can I tell a story? Of course, yeah. That's why we have you. I, um, when you get to the feds, they give you these boots. You get some institutional boots. These are your issues, and you have to wear these boots. And then you could go on the commissary. You could buy you some sneakers. You could get you some Nikes, some New Balance, or whatever off the commissary. And I remember Justin being in there, man, for like the first week. And I brought money with me, but I wasn't able to access my money until like the second week. So I'm walking around in these motherfucking boots, man, that you could take them and throw them against a steel beam, and you bend the beam. And my feet were killing me, man. And another dude came to me. He said, Sean, I got a pair of sneakers. They were used sneakers. I wear like a size 9. These were a 10. He said, yo, give me $2 for them. You can have them. They were used. And I said, man, give me them sneakers because my feet were hurting. And I got those sneakers, Justin, for $2. They were used, a size too big, and I put them on. And if they felt like the best pair of sneakers I had ever bought in my life, and then, then it clicked. 
it clicked that look at how simple this is, Sean. You know, look at how simple this is. You, you know, you don't need all of this shit that you thought was important. Taylor made suits, Hickey Freeman suits, John Stone Murphy shoes, trips to Africa, trips to South America. That shit don't, you know what I'm saying? And that's when I began to just appreciate the small things in life, man. The small shit, man. Yeah. And and what about your your son, too? You said you were just having your son? Yo, man, when I left him, man, it felt like somebody stabbed me in my soul, man, with a pair of scissors, man. That was the hardest shit I ever done in my life. I remember when I dropped him off that night. And uh, it was a Friday night. And my, you know, me and his mother were co-parents. And I would pick him up every Saturday to spend the Saturday with me and shit. And he, you know, I dropped him off. He said, Daddy, I see you coming to get me tomorrow. I said, nah, man. Nah, man. Because I had to fly to prison the next day. And he said, okay. And uh, he went in the house, man. I got in my truck, man. I drove back home. And I cried, man, like, ah, ah, that was the hard, that was some hard shit, man, to like leave my son, man, and uh, that was my main focus. When I got there, I said, man, I got to get the fuck out of here. I can't stay here. You know, I got to get out of here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's why I respect, well, when I watch your videos, I just know you have so much experience to learn from that I, I respect what what you say and then I listen to them because like you said in one of your recent videos you got the salt and pepper beard that's so pepper, baby <laughs> <laughs> but uh but uh I mean so I'm sure there's tons of stories we could talk about in there but but taking it back to like when you when you get out kind of fresh start I mean how do you keep up the motivation to when you already had so much you had real estate you had investments you had this and that liquid i know what it's cash like posting on. liquid cash yeah i know what it's like posting on youtube though and and you know you get 30 views you're like man why do i keep why do i this took so much work but now on your channel you have you have 2006 over 2600 videos up i'm sure more that just didn't make it and and over 18 million views since two that november 2017 like I don't even have 2,500 videos. Where'd you find that energy? <laughs> hey, Justin, man, I'm not playing, man. I'm not playing with y'all, man. I'm not playing with this world. I'm not playing with y'all, man. I'm not playing with this world. This ain't no game, man. This ain't no game. I went through that shit, man. I lost everything, kid. Everything, man. And I made an oath to myself, man. When I got to prison, when I got to Morgantown, I made an oath to myself that I was gonna make a comeback. And that my work ethic, my work ethic is crazy, man. You know? My work ethic is crazy, man. My my even when we working out, I'm just I'm you know, I just see people out here and I'm like, this dude is better than this dude is not better than me. But look, I'm gonna let him beat me, I'm gonna let this guy look at this guy. I'm not going to let him beat me. And that's why I just work and work and work. And I love what I do, man. I love my I love my YouTube channel, man. My subscribers are money. I like what I do. You know, I guess I'm impacting people's lives, you know, with the stories I tell. And, you know, nigga got the salt and pepper beard. You know what I'm saying? The honeys, they like that. You know? So <laughs> Talk I, a little I, bit I just, about what you do on uh, your channel for anyone who's... Well, talk a little bit about what you do on your channel for anyone who's not familiar. Because, like... You got the the workout videos you you record in the park. You got the motivational. You got the stories. Like, what are you what are you doing on your channel for anyone that? On my might channel, check you can get a, you can get a variety. On my channel, it's sort of like I, I I patterned it after a TV station. I have a calisthenics playlist where I go into these parks in the New York City metropolitan area and I film random people that I don't know about their calisthenics, and some of these interviews turn into like life stories. I do uh, coffee in the morning with Sean G. I put that up every morning, 9 o'clock. Um, I got at the payphone. I go to this payphone and I do a payphone skit. <laughs> uh, I go post office runs when I'm selling my merch. 
You can see, and I do interviews. I do all kind of shit on my channel, man. It's you never can tell. Yeah, I mean, no, I, I one of my favorite channels, honestly, because you have so many little skits and jokes. It really is like a TV show. <laughs> you're like uh, one of your videos, you said your, your intros to your video is a character <laughs> in the video. I was like, I like that as an editor. But yes, yeah, some of these. Um, let's, when did you really see your channel? Like, because you were you're interviewing people, you're interviewing, um, you were interviewing, you interviewed me, you just kind of like throwing a bunch of stuff at the wall. I did you ever expect your your channel's uh, approaching? It's at seventy eight k right now. I'm sure you'll get a hundred like any time now. Did you ever expect to reach this growth? No, nah, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know nothing about YouTube, social media. I never got on. Twitter, Facebook, MySpace, none of that. Because of the kind of lifestyle I was living, I shunned social media. I just, I thought I was going to do the one video about my book, and it was going to get 2 million views. I was going to sell 100,000 books. I was going to have my money back, and I was going to ride off into the sunset. And uh, that shit didn't happen. But I didn't... I didn't know, you know, this was no plan. I didn't plan this. I didn't plan this. You know, I just, um, I just kept working and I wake up every day and I go to work. Yeah. And like you said, it's like, um, I think you really are, well, you never know what's going to happen when you put your videos out there into the world. Obviously you're not going to just get 2 million views right away. I mean, you might, but I mean, you have gotten that and you have, pro and I'm sure you probably enjoy what you're doing regardless of, of the money aside because you actually really are able to impact people and speak speak to maybe younger people, older people. Have you yeah, gotten any... A lot any, of the young any... dudes, a lot of the young... Excuse me, sorry for cutting you off. Oh, no, you're fine. I was going to ask, like, what kind of messages have you gotten? A lot of the young dudes, man, twenty in the 20s, man, they call me unk. Uncle. <laughs> they, you know, they call me unk and... You know, the DMs I get from young dudes, man, you know, from all over the world, European kids, African kids, white kids, Spanish kids, black kids, Caribbean kids, from everywhere, man, they just, they just, something about what I say, it resonates with them. And uh, I started a Patreon channel too, man, you know, so I got the Patreon and I got the YouTube going at the same time. The Patreon link is Sean G. Um, but yeah, man, I, I love what I do, man. You know, I, this is what I do. Yeah. And, and you got your own clothes. I mean, you really do a lot. It's uh, well, I was going to I was going to say because for me, I grew up with the Internet. So like and sometimes sometimes it's still hard. I got to figure out like how how do we work this Zoom thing? How do we do this? How did you came out? never being in all the social media stuff how did you learn editing because that's i mean i teach all this stuff on my channel but like how'd you learn the camera how'd you learn editing how'd you learn all this stuff i taught my, all this shit myself i didn't know nothing about can i'm not real i'm an accountant i have an accounting degree i have a bs a bachelor's of science in accounting a master's degree in finance i'm not no tech dude i taught myself all of this shit everything that you see I've done it. And it just was concentration, man. I didn't know how to edit videos. I didn't know none of this. None of this. But every time I got to a block, I said, well, Sean, you need to do this. All right. Let me research it. Figure it out. And do it, man. I taught myself, man. I'm not going to be stopped, man. I'm not going to be stopped, man. I love that. Uh, and that's kind of what I... I have the same philosophy. So then... I'm a, I haven't even I gotten into like self-publishing or clothes, so I respect the, you being able to figure all that out faster than me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, the other thing I was going to say, so like, so you're doing these videos. At first, they're getting like 30 views, 40 views. When was the first, did you just have a video take off or was it a slow build? When did you say like, hold on, why did this video get 10,000 views? I can't check? remember. I can't remember that one. Um, but my biggest video on my channel now is uh, 
It's almost got 3 million views. It's the one I did with Red Shot Black Star in Wingate Park, the Earth Man. And um, that shit got 12,000 views the first day, 25,000 the next day. And within a week, it was on 100,000. And then in three weeks, it was on a million. And that was when my channel changed. You know, and then, you know what I'm saying? It allowed me to, all right, you know what I'm saying? And then subscribers just started pouring in. And then they started to go back and look. I knew my content was dope. I knew my content was money. I had up a lot of videos, but I couldn't get no views. Nobody would subscribe. But I knew my shit was different. I knew my content was dope. And when that big video came and they started subscribing, they went back to look at my older stuff and they started to say like, yo, this, this kid's got some, he's got some good content on his page, man. And that was a game changer for me. Yeah, that's something I think I, I, I preach a lot too, is like if just having a catalog of content and eventually, like if that video would have went viral and then you had nothing else on your page, it's like they would have just came, oh, okay, there's nothing else here. But you were doing this every day, multiple videos a day. So it just needed that one to, to get the attention. But uh, you're, are you, you're from New Jersey, right? Born and raised. So, I mean, out, I'm in Michigan. There's not really a huge calisthenics culture, park workout culture, as far as I know. I might be wrong. But I, lo I love that there is like a, a park workout culture. I canceled my gym membership like a year ago because I'm like, you could just work out outside. Uh, you know what I mean? That's my philosophy too. Free fresh air. What's your philosophy on fitness in general? Because you're fit over 50. That's why I beat everybody, man. That's my advantage <laughs> over everybody, man, that I'm in shape. I, I work out every day. I work out every day. I work out every day. And, um, you know, that's my advantage. I'm 51. I'll be 52 next month. And I could work out with the young dudes. You know, I could go. You know? And, I, you know, the calisthenics, I don't lift weights. I do everything as calisthenics. Um, I lifted a lot of weights in prison. I stayed injured. My shoulder, uh, my elbow, my wrist. You stay banged up with the weights. But with the parks, you could go to the park, you're out in the sunlight, you're getting the vitamin D, you're breathing the fresh air, you're interacting with other people. You know, I, I just, I work out, man. And that's, I don't get sick. I don't take no medication. I don't, you know what I'm saying? I'm in great shape, man. I eat right. And um, I learned all this in prison too, man. So you didn't used to like, be health conscious when you were just working as an accounting and finance? No, I ate everything, man. I was fat. I was fat. Fat and fucked up, is what, as they say. And I learned how to eat, man. I saw dudes, they said, we're showing you got to cut that out. You got to cut that out, you know, and you, you learn. Because it's all in the diet. It's all in the diet. Yeah, but how do they, I mean, in prison, isn't, like, you got garbage food, no? Like, junk food. Like, I see the videos on, on social media, people making, like, they take the hostess and then they take the thing, they mash it all up, and they make all these cool recipes. But... Well, if you go to commissary, on the commissary, you could buy tuna fish, you could buy mackerels, you could buy... Um... Um... Peanut butter almonds the main source of protein going to the commissary is your mackerels and your tuna and oatmeal and you learn you condition yourself to eat that that's that clean protein on thursdays was chicken day at mainline so you went to get chicken day because that was a lot of protein in the chicken but it the food is horrible but it's just the amount of reps that you do the 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 intensity of the workout it just it overshadows whatever nutrition. The, the, the workouts are just crazy, the amount of reps. You work out two, three times a day. Every day. Yeah. And what about like uh, education and, and reading and 
do you is there a, what's is there a good library in there or is it just oh yeah oh yeah a, yeah in the feds we had a good library man you you know and you there's books everywhere everybody's reading everybody's a reader you know you get into some really deep deep conversations you know I was in there with um I was in there with a dude who was a NASA he worked for NASA. He had the highest clearance. He had one of the highest clearances in the Pentagon. He had a master's degree in finite mathematics and a and a PhD in quantum physics. And to talk to these, you know, you're in there with doctors, with dentists, you know, gang members, uh, lawyers, stockbrokers. The, I was in there with the mayor from Charlotte. Um, you know, all senators. And you get to sit and talk to these people and, you know, the conversations, some of the most enlightening conversations I've had in my life. Because you could sit down for three, four hours straight and just talk to a motherfucker, just talk. And, you know, everybody got books, but the library was was money and I'm, a, I'm an avid reader, I'm a voracious reader. So I would go in the law library, I would go in the law library or the main library and get an encyclopedia and just read it. Or a medical just dictionary and just read it. <laughs> it's it's kind of funny because like, I mean, obviously it's not a great place to be in. Nah. But if if we could take our our free life that we have out here, and treat it a little bit more like cut out all the all the distractions and all the wasteful stuff we do, and just like keep books around us and keep and try to stay healthy, whatever whatever we can, and, and go outside all these little things that just cause it's the only thing you can do when you're in there plus being free. I feel like, is that, have you taken translated that into your man, Justin, I brought that shit home, man. My discipline game and my concentration game and my focus game and my spiritual game, my physical fitness, my mental clarity, my self-reliance game, went to a whole new level while I was in there, man. And I said, you know, I brought that shit home to Bloomfield, New Jersey. And, you know, me and my son live here. But I treat, I I, I take myself back. You know, I say, Sean, sure now, you know, we got to get, we take our shower, 8 o'clock, 8.30. We put our pajamas on by 9. We getting in the bed. Okay, we're up at 5.05, 5.10. Let's get our day started. Let's work out. Don't worry about the phone. Keep the phone off until you get your shit right. Concentrate, quiet the mind. All of that shit, I, I, I brought it here. And I think that's why I'm able to work so hard too, man. My work ethic is what it is. Because I don't, I yeah. don't like bullshit conversations and having a whole bunch of women and shit. I don't do that shit no more. It's meaningless. Meaningless. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm in that stage of my life right now where, you know, you got How old are you, Justin? I'm 28. Yeah, so you a baby. When I was I 28, I was crazy <laughs> in a bag of dust, man. <laughs> what were you doing at 28? Oh, man, what wasn't I doing at 28, man? I, you know what I'm saying? You have a bunch of girls, you... You know, you're going to the club. You don't know who you are. You're trying to fit in. You you know, you, oh, I should be further along. Where, you know, now I know where I am. I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. good. I'm good. I'm focused. I know exactly where I'm going. Exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. Well, I really do have to commend you. I mean, it's for anyone who, who anyone who's listening, just like go check out Sean's channel and you'll see we're not, I'm not just saying he has like all this energy. You really do have, you got more energy than me. I'm, I'm just going to say it. <laughs> it's like, it's not easy to put out these videos and to go film and to go upload. And, and the other thing too is like figuring out how to monetize your channel. What is, what is some way, some advice? There's a lot of people probably listening that are probably trying to start a channel or trying to do something. And, and you've tried a bunch of different avenues. I mean, it started out with the book and and you got the merch and you got the Patreon you're trying and you got the YouTube and you've done like trying to do brand deals with people. What are some ways that you've figured out and trying to do to monetize? 
It took me about a year to get a thousand subscribers, man, and to reach the four thousand hour threshold. Um, anybody starting a YouTube channel, man, just put up the videos. Don't even look at the views. Don't look at the subscribers. Just just post. I tell people that all the time. Just post, you know, um, and let the channel take care of itself. You know, don't worry about the views. But for me now, you know, I just, um, I'm a full-time YouTuber. I was window cleaning at the same time, too, when I started my channel. Um, I just post, Justin. I just post, man. I just post, you know. And, you know, sooner or later, one video is going to click, and then it's going to let you know that this is what your audience you know, this is what they're into. And for me, initially, it was the window cleaner with Soul and the calisthenics. I was doing them both at the same time. Yeah, I see, I see like most of the, uh, I mean, you got videos with 2 million views, half a million views, all these calisthenics. Cause... And the other thing too is uh, you don't have any fancy cuts. Most of these videos are straight through which I, I like the raw nature. I think a lot of people, they think, you know, I got to know how to be a master editor. You know what I'm saying? I got to put the perfume on it. On it. I got to <laughs> put the jacket on. Let's put some syrup on. Nah, I shoot. I go to the park. I shoot it. And whatever they say, I'm putting it up. I ain't doing... <laughs> the only editing you're going to see is my intro. But as far as the video, I'm letting it run. And and I get a lot of that. Like, yo, Sean, your shit is so real, so raw. That's why I like your channel. And you know what was a fortuitous thing for me, man? My channel really took off when the coronavirus shit happened, man. When everybody had to stay in the house and they the gyms closed. And then people started going to the park. They started doing calisthenics. They started searching for body weight workouts. And they said, Sean, that's how I found your channel, man. From the the quarantine that's crazy yep. yeah it's a silver silver lining yep. i think yeah even even my channel spiked a little bit because everyone's home like how do i make videos how do i which not to like benefit off of other people's thing but it's just crazy how you never know where this world is going to go i'm sure you've seen that in your life um so where are you so now you're kind of in the groove of things. Like, are you trying? Do you have any any new projects in the works? Are you? Do you have a goal to hit a million subs, or do you not care? Are you just kind of enjoying the process? I don't really care about the, about the subs at this point. Excuse me. In April the tenth. Excuse me. I also do motivational speaking. I'm putting on a motivational speaking event in Miami with some other YouTubers. Um, it's going to be about five or six of us, China Mac, Wallow267, Nino Brown, Papa Duck, Moses Cuevas, and NDO Champ. And uh, I went and worked everything out with the hotel. I'm doing this with all my nickel. This is all my nickel. And I'm going to transition my um, foundation that I've built into my motivational speaking thing, which is really what I initially set out to do at the beginning because I know I can get on the stage with anybody out here. I don't care what name you say, you know, I feel like I'd get on the stage with anybody and hold my own. And um, so I'm gonna put this together for us and just show that there's other facets to me besides the calisthenics, besides the, you know, the window cleaning was so, that I also can speak to business schools, colleges, sales teams, corporate America, whatever. Yeah, I think, I mean, that sounds like a great, lots of potential there. Like, you see all these speakers. I mean, kind of like, reminds me of the, like that Wolf, the Wolf of Wall Street thing. How he, he lost everything, or he, he lost it, and then now I think he does speaking, and... and yeah, but he ratted though. He 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 ratted. Yeah, <laughs> he ratted. I didn't rat. Not a, not everyone is up to your caliber. <laughs> nah, 
what would you tell my audience to i still got you know decades ahead of me what would you say not to focus on to focus on or, or uh what you maybe wish you would have did man make mistakes man keep making new mistakes don't be scared don't worry about what they say fuck what they say don't worry about what nobody say make mistakes and go for it go for it go for it you don't need to go to college to have a good life you know you don't you know if you look at the world we live in 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 11 months this shit has been turned upside down man what you thought was what is not not even that anymore right so to the younger dudes man go for yours man keep making new mistakes confront your fears don't be scared to fail failure is a good thing learn from it strengthen your mind strengthen your resolve get your stamina up get your fortitude up get your resilience up get your endurance up from a mental perspective man and don't never quit don't never quit don't never yeah. quit and for you to be 28 you got the bases loaded in the first inning with nobody out man with hank aaron on deck followed by barry bonds <laughs> joe dimaggio ted williams william you you gotta score some runs man you definitely gotta score some runs you know if i was 28 man if i was in my 20s man i would be going hard man hard that's what I, that's what i'm gonna try to do you you i want to touch on that too i mean earlier i mean you you have your you have your bachelor's you have your master's um i i went i graduated too but like here i am kind of like doing my own thing too what's your take on because you've traveled you've been to africa to these different places to you've uh been to to prison and out had your own businesses and graduated what is your take on education versus like college and, and that whole system, especially and how you've seen it evolve from when you were going to now? Do you feel like it's it's worth it or not? Or what do you think? Self-reach education is the best. What was that self? Self-reach. When you go grab what you want to learn yourself, because when you self-reach your education, you're already motivated to find out the information, so you're gonna give it your all. You go, you get a college degree, you do just enough to pass the quiz, you do just enough to memorize the test. Oh, I gotta do a research paper, let me do this and plagiarize this part and cut and paste. And so, you know, if you wanna get into the matrix and you wanna fall into that, then you could go get a college degree, but you don't need that, man. Some of the most brilliant dudes I met in the world, I met in prison, man, with no degree. They 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 could write law briefs, subpoenas, uh, motions. Attorneys used to attorneys who were inmates would hire these inmates to write their briefs. That's just how good they got at it because they spent so much time researching, you know. So you don't need to go to college to um, have gainful employment. You don't need to go to college to get rich. You know, you. it really comes down to your work ethic. It comes down to your work ethic. I knew nothing about none of this electronic shit. None of this YouTube. I taught myself all of this shit. I published my own book. I, my own merch, everything. I'm doing this shit on my own, man. And that's the best way. That's the best way. I would, I would, um, like my son is nine, little Sean. If he, if he was going to college next year, if he was graduating, I would say, look, man, the first thing I think you should do is go get your real estate license before you go to college. Ain't nothing wrong with it, but knock this out first. Get that under your belt, and then go to college. Yeah, I, I saw some, I saw a good perspective too. Like, you can always go, you don't have to go like right, right at a certain age, or, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
I think too many people fall into this like system of first you got to do this, then you got to do that, then you got to buy a house and you got to do that. Not to say there's anything wrong with any of that. And like, I want everyone to do whatever works for them because we all have our different abilities and our different, different ethic and whatnot. But I, I think I appreciate a different perspective because I think everyone can should at least critically think about what it is they're doing with their life. Man, you know how many people are fucked up with student loan debt, man? I know, I know people. Hundreds of thousands of dollars, man. And, you know, working at the mall, you know, are underemployed, you know, and got these loans that they're not going to go nowhere. Even if you file bankruptcy, you can't discharge them. So you got to be mindful, you know. And like you said, Justin, we've been, there's been an ideology Especially when I was coming up, okay, you graduate high school, you go to college, you get a job making $30,000 a year, you work there 25 years, you get a pension, you buy a house, you have a family, you get a Maytag washing machine, a Maytag refrigerator, and you got a, you know, you got your Chevrolet in the garage, and you just, come on, man, knock it off with that, man. That's not reality for everybody, you know? Yeah. I mean, like you said, with the, with the sneaker story in, uh, it's all relative to like, instead of looking at what the other person has or, or, you know, even what you used to have, but if you had nothing, then you'd be happy with the $2 pair of sneakers, you know, used, used pair, used pair. They were used. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I think we all I mean, the basic, basic necessities of life are probably a lot lower than what we all, you know, kill ourselves over. Not to say, I mean, it's, it's fun though. It's fun to like be competitive and to try to earn and, and like get nice things and do st- and go travel. But it's always a nice reminder to keep it in context, especially so many people killing themselves out over it. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, Sean, I want to thank you for coming on. Um, I f- if, thank you for having me, you, man. I'm glad we yeah, was able you, to hook up, man. We had some technical difficulties in the beginning, but <laughs> we didn't quit. We figured it out, and we're going to get this shit going, man. Yeah, and that's what that's what I love. From the first time I met you, you were always down to just, you know, make something work. But um, I want everyone, if you, if you are listening, go check out Sean's YouTube channel, um, Gun B Publishing or Sean G. I'll leave a link to it because... I mean, there's hundreds of more stories on there. We barely can scratch the surface. Uh, so if you like these stories, tons more on there. Workout videos, and he's uploading constantly. And uh, Sean, what else? What do you want the people to do? Patreon. Subscribe to my Patreon. Come to my entrepreneurship conference in Miami. This is going to be a game changer. This is going to be YouTubers will come in directly to our subscribers. We're marketing this toward uh, the average everyday Joe, John Q. public. Um, You know, never quit, never give up, man. Be yourself, man. Go on my website, gumbypublishing.bigcartel.com. Get both these books. You can get this fly-ass hat right here. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, man. And, um, you know, anything is possible, man. Anything is possible. Anything in this world is possible, man. If you can put it in your mind and match it up with your heart, man, you got it. The physical manifestation is a piece of cake after that. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sean. Thanks, everyone, for listening. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.